face of Angelo Dundee. Still another introduction of the motion picture actor Richard Roundtree, who is playing in the current movie Shaft. We may get this started yet. The ring announcer has other ideas. Angelo Dundee will be in Muhammad Ali's corner, of course. So will Lenoisum, Drew Brown Bundini. So will Ferdy Pacheco. Ferdy Pacheco, a doctor in Miami who a number of years ago began to take an interest in boxing, who has been very close to Ali from the advent of his career, who has worked with Angelo Dundee with many fighters such as Luis Rodriguez, Romeo Brennan. Ferdy Pacheco who must be regarded as one of the more knowledgeable men in boxing around. I mentioned Joey Fariello would be in Buster Mathis's corner. I think I should also mention that George Gaines, the very great manager of Sugar Ray Robinson when Sugar Ray was in his prime, has been working with Buster Mathis and will also be in Buster's corner. You see them now, Joey Fariello tying Buster's gloves. George Gainford has the theory that Buster has to fight a different fight to beat Ali. Must come out and go right at Ali. He has always been a retreating fighter, Mathis. George Chavallo says, no, no. I fought both Mathis and Ali. The way to fight Ali is not to go right at him. Mathis will be making a mistake if he does. So two conflicting opinions. It was George Gainford, of course, who devised the Gainford Law for closed circuit of fights. He said it's not how many seats you got in the theaters, it's how many rumps are in those seats, which was getting right to the heart of the matter. Well, they brought in a second set of gloves. Let's see what the story was on that. No, no problem. They're using the first set. Okay, both boxers, both boys, you are familiar with the boxing rules of the state of Texas. Now the instructions. On both boxers, keep your punches. Remember, ten-point must scoring system. Mandatory eight count. I tell you, Mike, step back and don't round, punch on the break. Take the knockdown, go to the front, turn the corner, and wait for me to take it. Come fight out. can be saved take by the bell. And protect yourself Directly above time. us, with a wisecrack, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. Loose and easy, he always is. He doesn't have to get into the four corners of the ring. The bell for round one. Ali, the white trunks. Mathis, the black trunks. Ali dancing and moving quickly. The old Ali would always move to his left. A wild swing that missed by Mathis. The flesh readily visible over the Mathis belt. Mathis leading with the left. Ali dancing and moving, 
incautious, the first flick of the left. Ali's favorite weapon, that left jab. In past years, always quick as a lightning rod. Ali keeping full distance away from Mathis, flicking the left. Mathis missing with two consecutive left attempts. Ali at 227, not really looking that heavy any longer. We've begun to expect him to carry that weight. What it does to his stamina and speed, as I said earlier, remains to be seen. Ali flicking the left. Buster wary, but in pursuit. Ali on his toes, Mathis flat-footed. You just saw Buster's record of 29 and 2. Lost to Frazier. Lost to Quarry. Ali has lost only once to Frazier. The unofficial time are running down. The countdown on round one. A cautious round. Buster trying to go to the midsection. Bell for the end of round one. at the corner of the former heavyweight champion of the world Muhammad Ali who has just given a dancing exhibition for the first round occasionally flicking the left into Mathis but without any real force or impact Mathis virtually not landing at all during the first round now you're looking over at Buster's corner Been a long time for Buster. 32 months in virtual exile from boxing. Not easy to come back against an opponent so vaunted as Ali. Round two. Ali the white trunks, Mathis the black velvet trunks, Mathis trying to lunge in. Ali still dancing. Mathis trying to land with the left, but missing both times. Quick flicks by Ali, not doing anything. Angelo Dundee is very near us. We're seated directly beside Ali's corner, so you may hear Angelo during the course of a round shouting instructions or whatever at Ali. Little noise from the crowd as Mathis lunged at Ali trying to get inside, but ineffectually.
Ali sticking and moving, as they say in the trade. The left always out there. But perhaps remembering how Mathis, on March 4th of 68, fought Frazier successfully for 10 rounds before being knocked out in the 11th. You just saw Angelo Dundee, by the way, on camera. Buster trying to get to the inside, but not yet able to do it. An attempted combination by the former champion. The left hit, but the right did not. Only 15 seconds left in this, the second round. The end of round two. No damage done yet in the fight. Ali's corner is saying to Muhammad, that's the way, boxing lesson, boxing lesson. Ali apparently wants to have five fights before going against Frazier again. Feels he needs it to get back something like the swiftness of feet and arms that he had before the long idols. On the other side of the coin, it remains to be seen if Ali and Frazier will ever really fight again. That, of course, is the Ali aim. Although he pretends otherwise, saying he doesn't care whether he ever fights Frazier again or not. <laughs> Round three is coming up. Mathis in a heavy sweat. Ali hardly sweating at all. Mathis trying to take the offensive with a flurry there. I must say, Mathis has shown no signs of... He's shown signs of respect, as he should, for a very good opponent, but he has shown no signs of fear that one could visibly see. Muhammad doesn't seem to be moving as much in the early going in this round as he did in the other two rounds. He's measuring him with that left. An old Ali trait, did it with Frazier, did it in his two fights with Liston, has done it in fact through all the fights. Now Muhammad is getting into that with those little jabs into that face of Mathis. Buster trying to go to the belly. Nobody's been able to do that on Muhammad effectively. Muhammad not moving as much this round, giving Mathis a chance perhaps to connect with a few. Notice there is no dancing on the toes. A lunge by Mathis missed. Muhammad's feet more flat-footed now. We're coming up to the two-minute mark in round three. Muhammad in his corner right above us in the white trunks. Buster Mathis in the black velvet trunks. Muhammad trying to keep piling up points, tire out his opponent. Buster lying all over Muhammad in the clinches, and why not? Trying to tire Muhammad with his weight. A left. A left by Mathis landed on the right shoulder of Ali 40 seconds left in the third round a right to Ali's ear a miss of a right by Mathis as Ali continues to score with his left 
but a round in which Ali has not shown the movement, as I said, of the first two rounds. Ten seconds left in round three. Well, you saw Buster with a little grin give Muhammad at the end of the round a little punch on the shoulder. Perhaps significance of a growing confidence in Mathis, or perhaps an act of self-delusion. Who could tell? But an interesting gesture to conjure about. Muhammad Ali in his corner. We are between rounds three and four. Angie Dundee working over him. Let's see if I can hear what he's telling. <laughs> Angie, you satisfied with the way the first three rounds went? Couldn't be better, he won three, said Angelo Dundee. I think he's right. The whole Ali corner is now yelling, box with them all night, box with them all night. He's back to the dancing now. Back to the initial tactics. Stick and move. Buster still lunging, but missing. Those are points with that left, Muhammad scores. Chris Jordan, the third man in the ring, veteran ring referee here in Houston, Texas. Eight years a pro referee, 12 years an amateur referee. Referee of amateur bouts, that is. We've gone through two and a half minutes of the fourth round. I think Muhammad wants to rest against those ropes. He learned something about that against Joe Frazier. Only 10 seconds to go in round four. Ali, the white trunks, Mathis, the black trunks. That's it. Looking at the ring in the Houston Astrodome, we've been through four rounds. We've got another round girl coming in now. They change round girls, alternate them. And so far, they're the best thing about the fight. Mathis's corner. 
He's being worked on by Joey Fariello. George Gainford is talking to him. And it's round five. I'd have to say, judging by what I've seen so far, that Ali has a lot more respect for Buster Mathis than the press has. We saw Buster get Ali against the ropes and go at him with a right that did not connect. It'd be interesting to see what would happen if and when he does connect. Pacheco, who works in Ali's corner, just shrugged his shoulders, said nothing's happened. Accurate judgment. Birdie's indicating that Muhammad seems flat tonight. doesn't look particularly exciting tonight, does he? Thirty seconds to go in the fifth round. Yet Ali is scoring points, which is what counts. Mathis did get in a left to the midsection. I'm hopeful that we can get some slow-mo of that last action you just saw. As, let's have a look at this. There you see Ali leaning back against the ropes. The very mistake, perhaps, that he made against Joe Frazier as Mathis does his first real punching of the night. And Ferdy Pacheco is right here next to me. Dr. Pacheco, the champ at this point seems a little flat, doesn't he? He does to me, yes, but he's won every round. I think he's kind of uh, working up to a finale here in the next round or two. I think you'll see some action. I think it's coming up to a finale. He's played around and he's looked flat and listless. I think he'll look better now. Okay, we'll points. watch. Thanks, Ferdy. Well, let's see if Muhammad's doctor is correct. Buster is trying to assume the offensive now. He seems to have gained a lot in confidence. An awful lot. Remember, this one is scheduled for 12 rounds. Mathis becoming the aggressor. Mathis. 
Ali now getting the left in four, five, six straight times. Again, dancing now. He's been at his best when he shows that kind of movement. Now he has reassumed the role of aggressor by dancing and confusing Mathis. Mathis trying to dance with him in the same way. A little bit of the all-in shuffle. Say, Mathis has been working for this fight in private for a long, long time. Give him credit. Not being bamboozled. That left keeps getting in by Ali. Coming up to the two minute mark and this the sixth round. How about that, huh? Even if he didn't score up to the punch. beginning to react with glee because the action has not been stirring we can have knockdowns we'll have humor fifteen seconds to go in the round Ali white trunks Mathis black trunks round of new dancing by Buster Mathis but left left jabs repeatedly by Muhammad Ali end of the round six rounds over we're going to try and get another look at those shuffles from a low angle watch this <laughs> Those shoes were only blue suede. We could have had the old Elvis Presley number. Blue, blue, blue suede shoe. Six rounds have gone by. You're looking over at Buster's Corner. Let's see if we can get a word in with Angie Dundee right above us. Angie! Angie, what do you think? Starting to go now, said Angie. All right. Starting to go now, and Mathis becomes the aggressor. Well, Angie told me in Frankfurt, West Germany, back in September of 66, that the sixth round would be the round at the end of the fifth, that Ali would knock out Mildenberger, and it never happened that way, so let's see what happens here. A lunge, but no damage, no connection. Take the 
We're in the seventh round. Ali White Trunks, Mathis Black Trunks. Quick check by this reporter at ringside. Shows that most of the press people have Ali ahead six rounds to none. Remember, 10 point must scoring system. There's nothing official about their scores either, of course. But it's interesting that they've got a shutout going. This round is almost over, and the action has been obviously sparse. The end of round seven, and those who thought that Ali would register a quick knockout have been disappointed. He's been fighting a tactical fight. Careful. Lots of movement, cut back the movement in the third round, cut it back a little bit in the seventh round, but in all the other rounds, kept fighting on the toes, moving about, using the left jab as the weapon to score points for himself. Mathis did his best fighting toward the end of the sixth round when he had Ali pinioned against the ropes and got to him with a left and a right. Round eight. Now we should be beginning to find out about fatigue. So far, Mathis still seems on his toes. A man away so long. Buster lunging at Muhammad. Getting him against the ropes. But that's it. Oh, -ho, he got a left in. He got a left in. What a dream it would be come true for Buster Mathis if somehow he could connect, somehow win this fight and be the one to get a crack at Joe Frazier. Buster Mathis who twice beat Joe Frazier when they were amateurs, who was supposed to be the one to represent this country in the Olympic Games, the heavyweight division, who got injured and Frazier went over as a substitute to win the Olympic championship. Well, there's Muhammad resting against the ropes the way he did against Frazier. Muhammad complaining about a low blow to Chris Jordan, the referee. And uh, sometimes it looks like Ali laughs. But with the mouthpiece, sometimes it's deceptive. I would say this has been Mathis's best round, at least up to the last 20 seconds. We have 45 seconds left in the round. Round eight, remember. Mathis, black trunks, Ali, white trunks. Ali standing flat-footed much of the time this round. Appearing rather tired, in fact. Didn't whirl around there and take advantage of the fact that Mathis was off balance against the ropes. 
So when Angie Dundee said, we're going now, baby. Now was around us so ago. Another love pat at the end of round eight by Mathis. Muhammad Ali who comes over to the corner and doesn't look that fresh. All right, let's have a look at this thing in slow motion. Some of the action in round eight. Getting that left in there, off the side. Notice the head movement of Ali, slipping the punch. Slipping the punch, I was off mic there for a moment looking at this monitor, but still the punch grazed. Matter of fact, I scored that round for Mathis. Round nine, and Ali begins with movement. That's been the key to him tonight. Crowd got excited about that left thrown by Mathis, but ah, that left got in, the other one did not. Slip, slip, slip. Referee Chris Jordan right on it, calling it right. Trying the gloves. Taking off the rosin. It could have gotten on them from the canvas. And Ali's corner now. They're saying, come on, come on, come on, Ali. He's way ahead in the fight, no question about it, but his people wanted a much more compelling performance than Ali has given up to this point. clock counting down the upper right hand corner of your screen the ninth round that's is going after Muhammad but hitting Muhammad's gloves in the main. Thirty seconds to go in this round. Counting down. A holding contest. Come on, Roundabout over. Lunge and a miss. End of round nine, the crowd beginning to boo a little bit. Viewing the fight with disfavor at the moment. You're looking over at Buster, who's being worked on. And right above us, Angelo Dundee, working on Muhammad Ali, and coming down perhaps to join us again, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, who is just up there. 
Purdy, how would you characterize Ali's performance now? It's still I think he's wrestling too much with, uh, with a heavy man for no reason at all, and uh, he has to finish it off in the next couple of uh, rounds. He's only got uh, four rounds, 12, and he's playing with it. Now he's got to get down to it. Still listless. That's the way Pacheco characterizes Ali. Wrestling too much with a heavier man. Well, Mathis did fight Frazier much this way. Only Mathis was ahead on most cards on points at the end of 10 rounds. when he fought Frazier and that's not the case tonight or wouldn't seem possible to be the case to go in round 10. Twenty seconds to go in round ten, and this dearth of action needs no words. sounds I think are rather expressive for the occasion there is general discontent <laughs> Mathis has gone 10 rounds against the former heavyweight champion of the world he does not seem to have scored many points but he has lasted 10 rounds. He was an overwhelming underdog in a vote taken by all of the scribes present from all parts of the country for the bout and from all over the world. Only one writer, a writer from London, picked Mathis to win and eight out of every 10 picked Ali to knock Mathis out. Still could happen. He got Bonavina in the last round. This is round 11 of a scheduled 12 rounder. A 
those lunges look more impressive to the crowd and perhaps on camera than they are in fact. Those punches are slipped by Ali. Again, you saw misses. We're about a minute and a half into the 11th round. Forty-five seconds left in the eleventh round. Sluggish fighting, arm weariness setting in. Fatigue as a right hitbuster, the same kind of fatigue that struck him down. He's up in time. In the Fraser fight, strange to see. Now he's in desperate trouble. That's it. Coming up, but he can be saved by the bell and will be. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. Remember, we told you about that at the start of the fight. In the state of Texas. Saved by the bell. In accordance with their rules. Now let's look at the knockdowns in slow motion. That was the first one. Fatigue, it seemed to me, as much as anything else, felled him. But of course, you'd have to be in the ring. There it is, the right. And combinations. And down he goes. There's a question now. There's a question now. Let's get back to the live ring, the bell. There was a question as to whether or not Buster would come out. His eyes are glazed. One must question the wisdom. He's ready to go right now. The eyes are glazed. I wonder if Ali really wants to hit him at this point. Buster lunging out, but believe me, they're right above me. Well, they go on with it. Curious. Look at him. Look. Now Buster seems to be coming to himself a little bit. But I tell you, the man didn't look right as he even came out to start the round. I wonder about this. We have two minutes left in the fight. Things I've ever witnessed. 
man was just falling down almost on his own. Dundee is screaming, Muhammad, knock him out, stop it. Hit him, Muhammad, he's screaming. Maybe you can hear him right behind me. 45 seconds left in the fight. Let me turn this mic toward Dundee. No, Angie isn't saying anything now. Whole thing, I tell you. Up again. 15 seconds left in the fight. Listen to Dundee. Not stop screaming. Just screaming. Knock him out. Knock him out. Well, that's the end of the fight. I'm going up to try and get to the root of that curious 12th round. Did you hold back? Okay. Every time there's been a brain concussion or uh, killing in boxing, it was because one fighter was in a helpless condition and the referee wouldn't stop it. If the referee had any sense, anybody in the world could have seen that that man was finished and just letting him stay. That was true, public crucifixion. There was no way for that man to win. He lost every round and he hadn't won that round and he was completely unconscious on his feet and it should have been stopped. And I hope the fool boxing judgments of food judgment systems that we have around here will stop fighting to see people hurt because as soon as one kill they want to say you wouldn't go to the army to fight for your country and you don't like to kill then why did you kill that man all right so leave me alone and shut up and be glad you saw a good fight <laughs> listen Muhammad. my next fight's in zurich switzerland with jurgen blinn jurgen blinn i want everybody to know we just signed for another fight next month we have to joe frazier and he's running he's ducking and he's talking about he won't fight for a few years and I hope the public bring him on out with that title and defend it like I did. I'm still resurrecting the game, although they say I'm not the champion. All right, Mohammed. Did you feel that when he went down for the first time, it was from the strength of your blow it was or a from fatigue? On. It's just what I've told you. It was a lingo on punch. Naturally, it was a uh, lingo, on, and it was the he was fatigued too. We both were tired. And I'm not going to deliberately kill or hurt nobody in no ring just to plead these bloodthirsty fight crowds who just want to thrill for a few seconds. Final question, were you satisfied with your performance overall tonight? Well, not really, because for some reason I was a little slow getting started, and I should have threw more combinations. Well, Buster Mathers is a good boxer, and you just can't punch him around at wheel until you get him unconscious, like I did. Go on in and get gold off. And that's the story. That's the story you heard Muhammad Ali say he knew he could have a do it justice. He knew that he, that he could have knocked Buster Mathis out, but elected not to in a long and stormy explanation of why he didn't. And so Muhammad Ali continues on the comeback trail. The winner over Buster.